happy to be here with all of you. So as Foti mentioned, uh, I work with Diamond Wine Importers. So we have been uh, importing wines from Greece for over 25 something years. And uh, my family also is uh, is the Levanos Restaurant Group. So I'm actually calling in from New York City in the basement of Molivos Restaurant, where we have one of the largest all Greek wine lists in Definitely the largest in the country, but possibly maybe in the world. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so growing up with Greek wines has always been a part of my life. It's always been a part of something that I've been passionate about and sharing the treasures of Greece with everyone. So even though, you know, most of you, I'm guessing based on the names in the chat box and the names in the little face of windows, I'm guessing most of you all are Greek here, uh, but I, hopefully um, you could learn something new about Greek wine today. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we're going to discuss a couple different regions, producers and wines. And again, as Ari mentioned, if you have a question, since there's so much of you, please don't unmute yourself, but you could go ahead and type it in the chat box and I will go and do my best to answer everything as we uh, as we go through it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Feel free to please take uh, wine number one, which is the Dulufakis Vidiano, uh, and you, as as you'd like, and drink it drink at your own pace. You know, with three bottles of wine, hopefully you have some friends to share with, and you're not going <laughs> to kick it down all by yourself. But it is Friday night, seven o'clock. You know, to each their own, right? <laughs> okay, so uh, it's time for Greece. Uh, so um, again, I work with Diamond Wine Importers. We've been importing wines for over 25 years. We have about 12 uh, wines in our portfolio, 12 wineries that we represent from each different region in Greece. Um, and I love to show a map of Greece. And now, luckily, we're all Greeks here, so we understand how beautiful and diverse Greece is. But a lot of people don't realize just how unique the top topography is and how uniquely shaped it is for producing wine. You know, there's over how many islands? There's a thousand islands in Greece and a couple hundred that are, are wine making regions. Uh, but we make wine all the way in the southern part of Greece from Crete uh, to, the, to the Peloponnesos, right? The peninsula here in southern Greece, all the way up to the mountains of northern Greece. I mean, what a lot of people don't realize is that our country is covered in mountains over 75% mountains and what's unique about that is some of the best wine regions come from these high elevation parts of Greece um, where it's actually a little bit cooler climate very unique soil types that create these fantastic wines another thing I like mentioning is that you know Greece has we've been producing wine in Greece for thousands of years this is one of the oldest wine producing regions in the world and we should be very proud of that as Greek Americans and Greek people um, but what's especially exciting is that today, the wines using ancient grapes are finally uh, being made with modern technology and more skilled winemaking practices. So as a result, the wines of Greece today are the best that they've ever been. And they're now starting to become very widely uh, received, widely appreciated um, outside of the Greek community and, and beyond. So it's something that we're very proud and excited about. And this year has been one of the best years for wine sales in Greece from Greek wine. So, you know, it's definitely, it's, it's pretty cool to see that our little country um, of about 10 million people is now finally catching up to the rest of Europe and, and, and the wines are, are, are starting to really become sought after. Now it's worth mentioning that in Greece, there are over 300 indigenous grapes that are grown in Greece. So that means there's unique grapes that you can't find anywhere else in the world besides Greece. So that's something that we're always also very proud of. And today we're going to be exploring a few different grapes that are unique to Greece. All right. So the first place we're going to talk about is Crete. So Crete, of course, is the southernmost island in Greece, one of the biggest islands in Greece. And Crete, Crete has been producing wines for thousands of years. I love, I don't know who's here has been to Crete. Let's everyone raise their hands if you've been to Crete or who's from Crete, all right? <laughs> couple of you guys uh yeah Ari <laughs> yeah well half half of me <laughs> well this is my last trip to Crete I loved it there as you can see <laughs> uh Crete is so special I mean you have very lively people you have some of the most amazing foods this wasn't on a Friday don't worry uh, <laughs> um, but what you can see is uh there's such a lively type of people there um this this chef was amazing but what I love about Crete as well is that there are hundreds of grapes that are found in Crete that you don't even find in other parts of Greece. Um, some of the grapes, say for example, for whites are Vidiano, Malvasia, Muscat of Spina, Vilana, and for red, we have Liatico, Cotsifali, Mandilari. 
And the wine you all have in your glass today is called Vidiano. Um, and this comes from Dulufakis Winery. So they are located in the center of Criti in the region of uh, Eraklion. So right in the middle of the island. And what I love about this part of Greece is that you could be on an island looking out at the mountains and behind you have like a snow-capped mountain and then past the ocean. You have such a unique ge geography, topography that is, is well suited for producing, you know, not just wine, but also, you know, um, figs and olives and fruit trees. And there's so much lush life here in, in Crete. Um, and if you haven't been there, I'd highly recommend traveling because it is one of the most beautiful places I've ever visited. Um, but now it's pretty special is the, the focus on the indigenous grapes of, of the island. So, you know, in the 60s and 70s, a lot of wine production in Greece was predominantly focused around bulk wine production. And also with grapes that were maybe internationally popular, but not uh, well known and, or well, well suited for the Greek environment. So a lot of winemakers were growing Cabernet Sauvignon and Sauvignon Blanc and Chardonnay. And that's what the bulk of wine in Crete was, was ma being made, was these international grapes. But with a couple of producers that we work with, and especially this guy, Nikos Dulufakis, he uh, decided to focus on the indigenous grapes of his hometown. So he ended up replanting, ripping up all these, all these vines and replanting Liatico <clears throat> and Viriano, uh, and also some Malvasia <clears throat> to really focus on the Cretan grapes that make his region and his hometown so special. And as a result, you are now drinking in your glass, um, basically an ancient grape that was once forgotten about, but it has been revitalized, rejuvenated, and has do, it does so well in, in this environment. Um, you know, Greece is also, especially Crete, is blessed with some amazing uh, weather. You have beautiful conditions where you don't have to use pesticides and fertilizers as much as you would in other parts of the world. So as you can see here, this is called cover crop, where they they use um, they they in the spring and they when the grapes aren't growing yet, they'll plant other plants and herbs and wild wild kind of wildflowers as a way to reintroduce nutrients back into the soil. So they don't even use much fertilizer here at all or pesticides. It's all organic winery, which is which is fantastic. Uh, and Dulufakis produces a whole bunch of different types of wines from Liatico, Vidiano. He also makes an orange amphora aged wine here, as well as a red, and Malvasia, which is a very aromatic wine. But the one you have in your glass right now is called the Daphnios Vidiano. Mm -hmm. So again, this grape here is Vidiano, uh, the indigenous uh, old variety of, of Crete. Everything done by hand, no, or, or no pesticides, no, no fertilizer at all, all organic and natural. 100% uh, stainless steel, uh, and it's all aged in a tank. So if you all wanna give the glass a little swirl, you can kind of give, stick your nose inside, give it a smell. Uh, let's talk about it. What, are we, what kind of flavors are we getting? And I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so we could all see each other while, we'll, while we all taste the wine. Yeah, let's get some comments in the chat box as yeah. we're tasting together. So it's, you always want to smell the wine first because you taste more with your nose than you do with your tongue. Your, your mouth can only taste five flavors. You can taste uh, saltiness, sweetness, uh, bitterness, acidity, and savoriness. Uh, but your nose has these olfactory glands where it allows you to taste thousands of different things. So definitely give it a good whiff. And, and, and uh, yeah, you should be smelling different things like, um, you know, some stone fruit, maybe apricot, uh, peaches. Uh, and feel free to add any comments of what you think, what you taste. There's no wrong answer when it comes to wine tasting. Maybe, Foti, you want to give us a start? You want to? As, as you mentioned, um, I, as you, uh, an abundance of fruit in the aromas, right? Mm -hmm. um, but from the texture perspective, it's really refreshing. Um, it's got some crispness, but it also has a little bit of depth, right? Mm -hmm. um, so for me, this is an inviting white wine. Uh, from the aromas to the flavors, and to the finish. Very clean, easy to drink. Um, I can sip on this on its own, but I can also have it with food as well. Yeah, and it's worth mentioning that almost all wines in Greece, not all, but the majority of the wines in Greece are meant to be consumed with food, right? In Greece, wine is food. It's a part of the dinner table. Uh, so that's one thing that we we always like to mention is that when you're, when you're picking wines to have with your dinner, with your meal, 
you know, because these wines, they don't have sugar really in them. They're not, they're pretty dry. They have great acidity. It makes food taste better. And it, I always use the analogy, imagine taking a fresh lemon and squeezing it over a piece of grilled fish, how it makes the food taste better. It kind of excites and wakes up your taste buds. It enhances flavor. And wine does the same thing. It kind of, it cleans your palate makes resets you for that next bite so that it helps enhance the flavor of food and especially white wines from crete i think are really great at this um so yeah i mean i hope you all enjoyed this maybe it's the first cretan wine you've all had uh maybe the first video no you've had um uh, but this is a very special grape it's starting to make a lot of uh headway it's starting to become more sought after in greece as well uh just because of its 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 versatility the way it ages, I mean, this wine ages kind of like a Chardonnay, um, a beautiful fruity flavor. Uh, again, a really fun wine. I hope you all enjoyed wine number one. And I think uh, it's worth mentioning too, uh, Johnny, that as we are, you know, the seasons are changing and we are approaching Thanksgiving. Um, and a lot of folks have asked, you know, what wines to pair. Typically, the go-to is typically Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. But for those that are kind of thinking outside the box and considering Vithya, I know in my opinion has a place on the dinner table for Thanksgiving. For sure. I mean, this is a white wine with a little bit of body. So it, go, it goes well with the Thanksgiving turkey, with all the side dishes, the stuffing and all that. Or if you're like my family, I'm Greek and Italian. So we have a pastizio and the lasagna and the turkey all together. So you need a wine that goes with, with everything. That's and uh, there's yeah. got to be a battle at the table when it comes to that, right? Well, we just add another table. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what, what, do you, what do you do when the discussion of wine comes up? Because I'm going to say you're with the Greek wine. But is there anybody in your family that fights for Italian? <laughs> no one really fights. Everyone just loves wine. You know, wine brings people together. And then they'll always tell me that, you know, in the beginning, they'll always end up saying, well, since Sicily was basically Greece, you know, so it's we're all one people. And my, right. my family's my mom's side of the family is Sicilian. So it's all. We're all one big melting pot. And they go always say, una faccia una razza. That's the that's famous saying. Oh, that's true, yeah. yeah. And, so and there's no more, fighting. And one more last comment, Johnny, about the wines is what's important that you just mentioned is the practices. So the, the Dulofakis family and winery um, are known for farming organically, uh, clean wines. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, very little intervention in the winemaking process. So that's very important where people, you know, a lot of consumers are looking for products that are sourced from organic farming clean you know no pesticides and in greece if i'm not mistaken most properties most wineries are practicing it without really going through the 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 hoops and challenges of getting certifications it's just normal practice in greece mm -hmm. to use very minimal intervention and uh, no chemicals in winemaking yeah, exactly. And, you know, think about in Greece is, is, is most of the wineries are small, they're family owned, small family owned businesses. And to get the organic certification, it could cost up to $10,000 per vineyard, not per property, but per vineyard. So most of these people are have a property of dozens of little small tiny vineyards. And imagine that will be their entire profit of the year to get the certification to put organic on there. So they say, we don't need this certification. We're going to make the wines correctly. Uh, people will have to trust us, but that's how they do it. You know, they don't need to, uh, they don't want to spend that money because just, they can't really afford it. Um, but at the same time, they have, Greece has such a great, great weather, great conditions where they're able to produce wines naturally without much intervention and still uh, make a fantastic, delicious uh, wine. I think we got a, an interesting question for you, Johnny in the chat box. Oh, someone asked how many grapes are needed to make a bottle of wine? So that's a good question. I don't know exactly how many grapes it's, I think it's about like, like two or three kilos of wine or maybe like one or two, two to like one to four kilos of wine to make a bottle, I believe. So that's a I, bunch of bunches. Right. I was told that uh, in general, depending on the cluster and depending on the size of the grapes, it could be anywhere to like 500 plus grapes. Um, that are pressed and crushed to make a bottle of wine. Wow. And not only, so once you, once you crush the juice, crush the grapes and take the juice, a little bit of it evaporates naturally, you know, it's called the angel share where, um, because alcohol evaporates at a lower temperature than water naturally, you just slowly have a little bit of reduction. So especially as the wine ages over time, you get less and less wine. So it might be 500 grapes to make a white wine, but if you age it for five years or something in a barrel, it's going to be way less. 
Interesting. Any, anybody else maybe want to give us a comment or any uh, feedback on the on the first one that we're tasting together? And it could be anything. Ari, Elaine. Um, Kathy and I are eating spanikopita that she made for me this <laughs> afternoon. Perfect. And, and we're, it does go really, really well good. with food. We're enjoying it very much. Thank you. Perfect. Great. The only, right, uh, go. the only downside to that is we don't have any of Kathy's spanakopita with us. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that, that was that was missing from the packages we sent out. <laughs> Excellent. It's always like this is like a picture of a classic Cretan spread. Um, you know, it's always good to have food with your wine. Uh, it help, makes the whole experience more enjoyable. So next, we're going to move to the Peloponnesos. So this is the area of southern Greece past the Corinth Canal. And we, the, the next one is a rosé that is actually a blend of three different grapes, uh, Ayuritigo from Nemea, Mosco Filero from Mantenia, and then a little bit of Syrah. So yeah, so let's talk about these regions. So this comes from Domain Scuras, uh, which is founded by George Scuras in the 80s. He's considered one of the pioneering winemakers of Greece and gets a lot of credit for bringing high-end winemaking to the country. And then when he started, he was making wine in his garage and um, and it was just a hobby for him, a little a little side project and ended up taking off, you know, because once people realized how good these wines are, people followed suit and started to really continue to uh, change the practices of winemaking in Greece. But the Peloponnese is really home to two main grapes, Mosco Filero, which is a white grape. Sorry for the sound. Um, let me just lower that. Uh, Mosco Filero, which is a uh, pink skinned grape, but actually has white juice. So it's a white grape with a pink skin, which is unique. So it has a little bit of color if you let it sit on the skins for a little bit. And, th and then Ayoritico, which is the St. George grape, which is um, one of the most popular uh, and widely planted red variety of Greece. So the Peloponnese is really mainly gro growing indigenous grapes like Mosco Filero and Ayoritico, 60% um, white wines and 40% red wines. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, so this is Mantenia. This is where they grow the grape Mosco Filero. So you can see very mountainous, high altitude uh, area, which is cool. You know, it's very, very cold actually up in the mountains. So in the summer, you know, the grapes don't get over, they don't overheat, they don't get over ripened. So it helps produce a very balanced grape. Here's another picture of Mosco Filero. So you can see it's, as for a white grape, it has kind of a dark pink skin, but it's unique because the grape itself is actually, um, Complete, the, the juice is completely clear. Some more pictures here of, of uh, their winery. And then I have a little video I'm going to play. This is George Scuras himself describing Mosco Filero. Okay, Mosco Filero, it is, uh, it is my grape. I love that grape very much. It is uh, in the center of Peloponnese. I make wine uh, with with the Moscow Filler the last 20 year, years. Uh, Moscow Filler, it is a, a grape uh, variety in this, which we can find in the center of Peloponnese, in the plateau, up, and, and there is, and for that, because of that, it's typical. Huh? Uh, at about uh, 2,200 feet, and uh, up there, it is a cold area of Peloponnese. Imagine that, uh, the harvest comes in October. That means uh, a lot. Uh, as this area it is uh, it's a cold area, the uh, Moscow filler preserves the aromatics. By itself, the, um, the grapes of Moscow filler, they have uh, red skin, which is not exactly red because there are a lot of clones. So there is the Aspro filler, white filler, uh, which is a green, more green. There is the Xantho filler, which is the um, uh, blonde uh, filler, blonde mm. which is another grape, another, it's like the Gewürztraminer. You know? There is the Mavro filler, which is the black filler. So there is a lot of different grapes, uh, but uh, there is color on the skin. And the wine have not color. It's unbelievable. It's uh, like transparent. <laughs> but um, 
the wine it is uh, always having such uh, of beautiful aromatics basin uh, in in flowers the rose petals the violet the jasmine um, you know the uh, sweet citron um, all these citrusy ar ar aromas comes uh, from from the Moscofidero. It is really very very pleasant. At the same time, Moscofidero have a very nice acidity. The Mosco so that's uh, Moscow Filero in a nutshell. So worth mentioning and worth noting because it's such a special grape uh, and definitely one you should all seek and try to tr try to find that one at, at some point. It's really delicious. Um, and then the red grape that's predominantly grown in this area is called Ayoritico. So we're going to talk a little bit about Ayoritico, um, the grape of St. George, right? So this is the St. George variety, uh, medium bodied red grape produces rosé. They make rosés out of it. They make sparkling wine. They make dessert wine. Uh, and they make the red wine uh, and rosés. So a very versatile grape, um, Ayoritico here. It kind of looks like Sangiovese. Some people compare it to Sangiovese from Italy. To me, it reminds me of a Pinot Noir. And then I have another quick minute video from George Scuras talking about Ayoritico. And then we'll talk about the rosé that you all have in your glass. And if you haven't poured it already, you go ahead and pour wine number two. My thing is glitching. One second. All right. Well, this, the video is not working, so I'll go ahead and just uh, give you his explanation myself. Uh, so Ayoritico, again, the grape of St. George. You grow these grapes at about 3,800, about 2,000 feet up to 3,400 feet of elevation. So as a result, you have, again, a little bit cooler climate, considering that you're in the southern part of Greece where it's very hot. You have um, this colder climate up in the mountains. So the grapes ripen and mature very slowly. That, that preserves the flavor, the aromatics, gives you some spice notes. It's really fantastic. So I love Ayoritico, and you should definitely seek them out. But since we couldn't give you five wines today, we put we gave you wine that has Mosco Filetto and Ayoritico blended together in it. So this is the Peplo Rosé. Now, Peplo in Greek, it means veil, like a crown. This is one of the newest wines from, from Domaine Scudas. And we're really happy to show this wine because it's so unique. You have three different grapes, and each grape is aged in a different way. So you have the... Um, you have Syrah that is being from age in acacia barrels, which is similar to oak, which is another type of wood. You have the Mosco Filero being aged in amphora barrels, amphora. So that's like an ancient winemaking practice, like a clay, clay, a clay vase. And then you have the uh, Ayuritigo being aged in stainless steel. So the Ayuritigo and the Syrah are going to give the wine the color. And then the Mosco Filero blended in there is going to give the wine some aromatics and freshness. So if you'd like, you could go ahead and give this wine a swirl, smell it, put it in your mouth, taste it. I mean, this is such a fun rosé. This is, to me, a, a year-round rosé. You have some barrel age on there, so it's not like only for the summertime. It has a little bit of depth to it. And right now, we just launched this wine in the United States. It's very hard to find here in the U.S., um, but in Greece, it is one of the hottest wines right now. Every every beach bar in Mykonos is pouring this, <laughs> like triple magnums. So people are really loving this wine, but we're really excited to have it here because you know most of it is drunk in Greece and only a little bit actually gets gets out here. So I'm gonna again stop sharing my screen so we could talk about the wine together. Wow, wow. Um, Johnny, uh, you know a lot of rosé in general is produced in Greece just as a part of the wine culture. Mm -hmm. And the rosé rose has been a, a growing category for the last handful of years, maybe plus years here in the U.S. You know, rosé was always thought to be a wine that signified sweetness. It was a sweet wine for different reasons that we're not going to get into. But dry rosés um, have become more and more popular on wine lists at, at wine bars, at restaurants, at your local retail shop. But uh, this particular rosé really, um, you know, took me by surprise because I've had a bunch of rosés made from that grape Ayurgetico that were a little more darker, deeper, and richer. But the combination of Ayurgetico red grape, Moscofilero, a white grape, well, or Pinot Gris, and then you have the additional Syrah, like this combination was, uh, 
just uh, brilliant. The fact that it has good aromas, it's got good textures. The acidity is right there. It's almost like drinking uh, a red, uh, a white wine, but it's red because of the red grapes, right? Exactly. And that's what's cool about it. And the actual, the barrel age there too, adds some depth and dimension. It's, you don't often find a rosé that has some part of it aged in barrels. So only 30% of the wine has oak. Uh, so it's very light and subtle, but it still adds a little extra dimension, some beautiful flavor to the wine. I think it makes it just so versatile, great food wine, um, a winter rosé. Again, another Thanksgiving holiday option for sure. Um, this, yeah. would give, this would give any French rosé a run for its money. In for my sure. Opinion. And especially for the price point too. Yes. So what another thing to mention. So yeah, so the Moscow Filetto, if you smell the wine, you can smell these like really beautiful aromas. I mean, those, those, those little floral fruity aromas, that's from the Moscow Filetto. But in the body, the little the strawberry and fruit notes, those cherry notes, that's from the other red grapes. So altogether, each grape plays a part in this blend. And it's fun, you know, it's a really unique style. And it does remind me of Provence, like a French style rosés, because in, in Provence, they blend Grenache and Syrah and they have a dozen different grapes. Right. And here, it's a similar blend. It kind of takes from that, that Provence style of blending, but using it using the Greek grapes in the mix, which makes it just very unique and, and fun. Any, uh, any, any thoughts or comments from our, our guests as they're sipping on this delicious rosé? Any likes, dislikes, comments? Are there Rosé fans in the crowd tonight? I know Ari likes Rosé. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. Great. Should I continue on to the next? Absolutely. Sure. All right. We're gonna, let's go on to uh, the north. Northern Greece. My One of my favorite parts. Um, of, of the wine world. So here we go. Okay, so now we're moving up to the northern part of Greece. We're going to have the Xino Mavro from Kiriani Estate. So Xino Mavro is one of uh, my favorite grapes. In Greece, it means acid black. So Xino means acid or acidic. Mavro is the word for the color black. So it's a very acidic, tart, and, and dark skinned grape. And it's believed to be the long lost cousin of Nebbiolo. So there is some similarities uh, from this wine as in and wines from Northern Italy from the Nebbiolo grape. And typically you're gonna be tasting this wine. It's gonna give uh, a tannic, high acidity, earthy qualities to it. Great, again, another red wine that's great for food. This is the kind of wine I wanna have with lamb chops or uvetsi or things like that. So Kiriani is one of the longest, uh, comes from one of the longest winemaking families in Greece, the Butari family. And they've been making wine in Greece for 200 years almost, since the 1870s. So uh, Yanni, uh, here's, this is Yanni Butari. There are the wineries named after. Yanni Butari and his son Stelios, they um, built their own winery in 1997 to, to, cut down, to create their own estate, separate from the other part of the family. And really trying to focus on bringing quality wine back to the region of Nausa, where they're from. And today it's run by Stelios Butari on the left. And again, these guys are getting a lot of credit for being uh, pioneers of high quality modern winemaking in Greece. And what I love about Nausa, this part of Greece, is you're up in the mountains. It is very beautiful up there, very lush, green landscape. And my family comes from the islands of the island of Lesbos, where it's like in the summertime, it's very dry and rocky and arid. But in northern Greece, it's very lush, alive. It's so green and vibrant. I mean, these views are fantastic. Uh, so I have this little descriptor here. Um, basically, you have two main regions in the north, Amidion, which is uh, where Alpha Estate comes from, a little bit cooler climate, and then Nausa, which is the wine we're drinking today, uh, where it's, it's cooler, but also Mediterranean. You have the Aegean Sea on, on the west, um, but also the mountains, the Mount Vermion, which kind of provides a little bit of a cooling factor, so it's not as hot as other parts of Greece. But high elevation, again, produces really delicious, aromatic styles of wine. Uh, again, everything's done by hand. You can see uh, every vintage, every harvest, they have uh, farmers coming from all over the country to help pick the grapes. Um, rolling hills just surround the landscape. It's so beautiful over there. Um, so again, the main grape they grow here is Xino Mavro. So it's very important to know this, this variety. Uh, it's one of the oldest red grapes in Greece. 
And the region of Nausa, where this grape is indigenous to, is the first appellation in Greece to get the status. Basically, it's the first area in Greece to be considered like a destination for producing wine, which is very, which they have a lot of pride about. Um, beautiful rock, beautiful hills that just completely surround this area where the winery is located, Kidiani Estate. So this is an aerial view of their winery right there on the top of the mount of the hill. You can see these about a dozen or so different parcels of land. So each vineyard has a different soil type, has a different exposure to the sun, which creates different types of varieties of wine in just one little estate. So the wine we're tasting today is the Kiriani Nausa Cuvée Village. So it's a blend of Xino Mavro from different vineyards. So he's taking some from each of these little parcels of land to produce a cuvée or a blend of different types of Xino Mavro. Uh, the soil type there is pretty sandy, which gives you this very beautiful characteristics in the wine. Um, it spends about 12 months in both American and French oak barrels, so you have a little bit of an oaky presence on there. But if you, if you want to go ahead and give the wine a swirl and smell the wine, you can see how, uh, how, the, how much aromas it has in the nose. It's pretty full bodied. I mean, it has some earthy notes. To me, I always taste, smell a little bit of sour red cherries. Sometimes I smell a little bit of spice, leather, tobacco. I mean, it's very great, full bodied, earthy kind of style of wine. But at the same time, it's not overly heavy, right? It's, it still is like a very light color compared to some other red wines that you might be used to trying. A little bit of oak, um, but not overly, not overly done. You know, it's very well balanced, which to me is important when you're, when you're making a wine that's meant to be with food. You want everything to be well integrated and balanced. And balanced is a key word that a lot of winemakers seek when producing, producing wines. Absolutely. I like to use the word uh, for this wine, Johnny, precise. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, when I mean precise, I mean what Johnny just mentioned, all those elements from the aromas to the uh, flavors and textures and to the finish. Like, you know, that's the um, the goal for every winemaker is how to create that balance. And in this uh, village, um, it's got all the elements in place. Um, and you mentioned that, you know, it, it's reminiscent of um, Italian wines from the north. Yeah. In Nebbiolo, right? For those of us that enjoy Italian wines, this, I think, or wines from this region definitely um, are up your alley if you enjoy wines of this style. Definitely. And um, yeah, I also, I find that it's, what I love about it is like, then make those comparisons. Sometimes you want to not do it because you want to make want the wine to stand on its own. But right. to me, the comparisons are so they're so fun to make, especially because you know now it's up in the northern part of Greece, the most northern part of Greece, and then Nebbiolo in, in the north of Italy. It's very similar landscape. You have these mountains, you have this rolling kind of hills. So to me, it's just it's fun to make these two these comparisons together. Um, but again, I hope you all enjoy this wine. Let me stop sharing the screen. Uh, and we could talk about it together. Um, I have a couple of people that messaging me. They love this red. They'd love the oak presence here. Uh, someone asked, how are vineyards watered and how often? Uh, it depends where they are growing. So some wineries don't have any irrigation at all. They rely entirely on the on Mother Nature to do that for them. Uh, Santorini, one of those. Yeah, in Santorini, there's no water on the island at all to use for farming. I mean, they have to rely on nature and it doesn't rain there either. So the wines receive very, very little water. Um, and here it's very minimal um, watering is done. Uh, in northern Greece, is they have a little bit of rainfall in the in the spring and then the early summer, so they have a little bit of water there already. Um, so they don't need to add too much water to it. Um, but you know, other parts of Greece, you might have a little bit of irrigation. Um, but at the same time, water is something you don't always want to overwater grapes because it, it just dilutes the flavor. It, it takes away. Um, so they do a little bit of irrigation here, but really not much. It's all about letting the mother nature do its thing. We have people from Portsmouth. They think they say the Nausa is their favorite. Love to hear it. <laughs> yeah. So um, again, with with wines together, it's it's always fun to taste them with friends, taste them with family, have them with food, and keep trying new things. And you know, with wines of Greece, you can never really have the same wine twice. It's 
wine is always, first of all, it's always changing. So even if it's the same bottle, it's going to taste different one day to the next. Um, but it's also worth noting that, you know, maybe 20 years ago, there was only a couple hundred wine wineries in Greece. And now there's over 1500. So the wine, the wine industry in Greece is booming. There's a lot of new producers working with old indigenous grapes. So a tremendous amount of diversity, a lot to explore, a lot to see and do. Um, so I, I encourage you all to keep on trying Greek wines and, uh, and explore the different regions of Greece. We only saw three today, uh, Nausa, um, Peloponnesos and Crete, but definitely try finding wines from Santorini, the wines from Attica are fantastic. Um, wines from Amidion in the north, Thessaly. So there's so many, so many wines to try. Um, and thanks, and thanks to your efforts into diamond wine importers. I think you're you are at the forefront of bringing Greece's finest to us here in the U.S. Because, and I and I speak for myself, but I'm sure many can share the same thoughts. It's always been a challenge to find good Greek wine uh, in any market that you are. You know, if you visit any retail shop, if you ask them for, you know, uh, I'm looking for Greek wine. And for over the years, Greek wine has either been pushed in the back of a room, it's been pushed in the corner somewhere, or it's been included in just the other section, right? Mm -hmm. In most retail shops. And now we're starting to see more and more uh, in uh, retailers that are actually taking more of a of an effort to showcase some of these fantastic wines that are coming to the market. And it's been a challenge over the years because of different reasons. But now we have the ability uh, today because of efforts like Diamond Wine Importers that we're having exceptional wines brought to us that we can actually enjoy as we, having, as we are having tonight. Exactly. And we also want to mention that with our efforts, we take it a step further that on our platforms, Greek Wine Club and Greek is on is that through Diamond Wine Importers, we're able to feature and showcase all these wonderful wines on our app and our website as well. And it's been fun to see this just this growth and in, in journey and also this the growth and in interest in wines from Greece. And a lot of it has to do with just people being more adventurous and exploring and trying things. It also has to do with the fact that the wineries in Greece have gotten better. And, you know, as a result of us working with some of these pioneering producers that encourage other wineries to, um, to step up, step up their game and to make wine at similar or better levels that any at that other countries are doing, um, but using the same the indigenous grapes of Greece. So that's it's that beautiful marriage of modern winemaking practices, but using the old indigenous ancient grapes of Greece. That's what's making the wine so special. And also, you have now Greek food is rising. There's better Greek restaurants opening up using Greek wine. And as a result, I think just these wines are getting out there. People are trying it. People are visiting Greece more than ever. You know, other Americans are tra tourists are traveling to Greece and they fall in love with the wines and come back trying to seek them out. So as a result, all those things together. And, and now we have great platforms like Greek Gazan and Greek Wine Club as well to help make it easier for people to find these wines. All together, it's just it's a great combination. Um, and you all should have any hard times finding these wines now. So uh, we really hope you enjoyed today's seminar and these wines. And uh, if anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out. And I'm going to type my email in the chat box. Um, I love giving uh, wine recommendations or travel ideas when people are going to Greece. So uh, yeah, so Johnny, um, that's a good point that you just mentioned. So for any of our guests that might be traveling to uh, Greece, uh, 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 soon or whether it's in the summertime you know some of these wineries do offer tours i'm, a, I'm assuming so yep. if anyone is interested you know johnny just left his email you can always get in touch with them if you ever wanted to maybe possibly have an appointment uh, or visit any of these wineries the wine tours today in greece are off the charts um the combination of of actually being there is a whole different experience combined with the efforts of uh having uh lunch or dinner at some of the neighboring restaurants is beyond any uh, expectation that we've seen elsewhere. So yes, definitely reach out to Johnny. Thank you. Um, One I mean, quick this... question just came in, if you guys want to answer that. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think is the most exciting wine trend coming out of Greece right now? Mm. Ooh. So trend-wise, I mean, Johnny, I mean, we can, you know, take a, our individual stabs at that, but you can go first. Yeah, so... Um... 
one of the most exciting trends I think coming out of Greece is this minimal intervention winemaking. Mm. You see a lot of winemakers that are um, working with with just mother nature. And we work with some producers too, that they allow the grape to speak for themselves. And that's a trend in the wine world all over the world uh, where you may be using indigenous yeasts that are nat natural to the environment or um, you know, not using pesticides, not using a little bit of sulfites, things like that that are meant to, to, to uh, make the wine taste a certain way. But winemakers now in Greece are really letting the grape do the work itself. And you're getting now, as a result, very diverse, unique, uh, very flavorful wines that are quite different than anything else I've ever tasted. And there's a lot more of that coming from Greece. And uh, hopefully we'll be importing more wines like that soon. Uh, but that to me has been really fun. And if I can add, as far as trends go, Johnny, um, to Irene's question is that orange wine has been a trend in general. I'm not sure if you've heard the topic orange wine, but orange wines are not made from oranges. Uh, they're, they're basically white wines um, that um, have been produced in a fashion that was, that's been ancient for so many, so many hundreds of years that it's uh, wines made from white grapes. They leave the skins in during fermentation and they uh, produce this very unique, um, striking wine that has dark colors, dark in, um, hues. They have uh, very rich textures. It's almost drinking red wine, uh, but it's white. And exactly. that's, a, that's a growing trend that's happening uh, all over the world. But Greece is actually jumping on that because they have uh, grapes that actually can produce very good quality uh, orange wine. Um, and we have actually a couple in our, in our platform. One happens to be from Dulofakis that's on our platform that's very rare and unique. But that's a growing trend orange wine. So I'm sure you might have heard the term before, or you might come across it, but it's basically natural wine with nothing going on in it other than the natural yeast and the grape itself. Right, Johnny? Exactly. Okay. For sure. So that's another trend that I like to mention. Another good question. Does anyone drink Retsina anymore? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So well, was it, was it, wasn't the battle that you guys had as wine people uh, to, to break Greece out of the being known for just the Retsina. It's like, oh, yes. yeah, in America, no, in our culture, it's like everybody's like, oh, yeah, Greek wine, Retsina. It's like, yeah, but there's so much more. Exactly. So I feel like a lot of people's first experience with Greek wine was Retsina. Mm -hmm. And as a result, many people thought all Greek wine is Retsina. <laughs> but Retsina is really just a small part of what they do. And I, I, I always consider Retsina, it's not really wine. It's it's an, an aromatized wine. I compare it more to vermouth than wine because it's the you're using the addition of pine resin. There's actual resin being thrown in there, which gives that piney flavor. Uh, but people do make Retsina. There are some really good Retsinas out there. Um, you know, with this, again, with this uh, increase in wanting to make quality wine, people are actually using quality resin now. And they're not just using like, flavoring agents and things like that and a lot of times people would just take like essential oil of their pine and use bad wine to mm -hmm. just cover the flavors with it so it, retsina wasn't always that great but now you see some really nice ones out there um so yeah i have nothing against retsina i think there's some good ones out there but most of it is really just meant to be like easy drinking cheap wine um I feel mm -hmm. like there, there's going to be some some Greek uh, quote unquote hipsters that are going to try to reboot well, Red Sina to the core. There already are. There's some like there's <laughs> orange, there's orange wine Red Sina right out there with like sediment in the bottle of the bottle, and it's like all cool. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> like fifty dollars a bottle. Yeah, uh, just that's jack not the my, price up. My and grandpa's Red Sina. That's not my yeah. papu's Red Sina. <laughs> I'd rather have your papu's Red Sina any day. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> But yeah, um, that, that's, you know, and that's a very good comment that you made or, or reference, Ari, that, um, you know, as, you know, Greeks in the industry, Retsina, unfortunately, has been a very big obstacle. But I think we've overcome that lately, because thanks to places like Santorini, um, who actually have put us in the forefront of being, you know, serious producers that actually can compare to any serious uh, region of the world, um, we've been actually given some um respect if that's the term that we can use as far as you know uh, worldwide producers so yes we're very proud 
that uh, we're bringing uh, wine to market that can stand up to any region of the world that makes quality, if that's a way to put it. Absolutely. Exactly. Um, so let's, uh, let's, uh, uh, you want to, uh, let me ask Elaine, Athena, do you guys want to uh, open up just some dialogue? Uh, you I, guys could I unmute think there's yourself. one more question there, Adi, uh, from Kathy. Oh, yeah. I noticed in the chat. Tell me about Vinsanto from Sandorini. Vinsanto. So Vinsanto is the uh, dessert wine from Santorini. Uh, it's the wine, vin, vino, like the wine of Santo Santorini. Um, it's a dessert wine that's been made there for thousands of years. Um, the name actually comes from the Venetians that settled in Santorini. Uh, so they would call the Vinsanto the wine of Santorini. And that's why in Italy you do see Vinsanto is grown, is produced there. But by law, as of like a few years ago, Vinsanto must be called Vinsanto if it's from Santorini. So Santorini beat the Italians in that war, which is which is fun. Uh, but Vinsanto is made from a Sirtico and also could be blended with two other grapes, the Santorini grapes of Ithiri and Idani. Uh, but after they harvest the grapes, they, lay, they put them on these straw mats and leave them out in the sun. Basically turns the grapes into raisins. And as a result, it concentrates the juice and the sugars. Uh, and then they crush the grapes, put them in these very small barrels, and they age them for years and years and years, like six, seven, eight years. Uh, and it produces this very rich, sweet, bright wine made from white grapes that has like almost like this brown color, uh, super concentrated. One of the most amazing things, you know, Foti mentioned a normal bottle takes 500 grapes to make a, a bottle of wine. But when you're making a dessert wine and you just can't put them in the sun and there's like no juice, you probably have at least 3,000 grapes to make one bottle of wine. So just very concentrated flavor, uh, naturally sweet, but with bright acidity. Um, and these are wines that could age forever. I've, I had one once from like from the 80s and it was drinking so well. It was one of the most amazing things I've ever had. So uh, Vinsanto was fun. Definitely seek them out. They're pretty rare and hard to find. Um, I think Foti might have some available in the store, right? Yes, we do. We, oh upon request because yeah. <laughs> they're, so, they're so they're so rare but yes we definitely have access to them yeah they're they're fun i mean it's one i think that's the kind of thing when i, I don't have kids yet but when i do have one i'm gonna like get their birth year vinsanto and like save it until they're like 21 and give it to them i thought so, you were gonna say i don't have kids yet but when i do i'm gonna give them vinsanto <laughs> yeah I, I, when they're 21 okay <laughs> unless you're in greece it could be a little younger yeah 18 18 <laughs> Put the Excellent. wine and the Holy Spirit on this. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So, um, as I said before, uh, are you guys okay with uh, opening up microphones? If you guys want to chat a or, little bit, maybe before, ask. Yeah, or maybe before the, any last minute comments from Athena. Yeah, if you if you didn't want to go through the whole trouble of typing in the uh, comment, we could open up the mics and you could uh, just ask. Uh, so, if you guys want. I, I just wanted to um, thank all our sponsors. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, and and thank um, our sponsor, Chair sure. Diane Stamatopoulos, and our co-chair, Deb Sijek, and our social media chair, Irene Stefanakos, and our president, Athena Kalivas, and um, also thank Foti, Ari, and Johnny, and I'll tell you, Johnny is very nice looking, but so is in Fati and Ari. So <laughs> we don't Thank tell them you. we paid you to say that. Sure. <laughs> Thank you so much. Right. Our pleasure. The, um... Showing is a list of uh, the the donors. So if you guys want to and see. and um, Irene is posting it on the Philoptohas website on the Metropolis of Boston website Excellent. too so Great. thank you all right all righty so now if you guys would like we're just gonna whoever would like can unmute themselves and we could just have a little bit of a chat and any questions or any comments anything you guys want to mention anything you guys want to say anybody you want to say hi to i just want to thank uh, everyone that participated and everyone that donated so generously to this event. It's, it's nice to see everyone on a Friday night too.
<laughs> well, <You're in> car. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, up here where we are, unfortunately, the weather wasn't the best weather to go out to yeah, an event. So <laughs> the fact that we're all together during these uh, during these times of weather um, and bring us close, uh, I think is uh, very nice. Uh, obviously, we'd love to at some point soon have events that were in person together. But, mm -hmm. you know, thankfully that uh, technology has allowed us to do this for now. The problem is that I'm getting so used to this virtual stuff. I I'm, I'm just going to be too lazy to actually go out anymore. So I'm going <laughs> to stick to the virtual. I have my pajama bottoms on right now. It's perfect. Cheers. <laughs> cheers, to, cheers to everybody here. And we appreciate everything yeah. and all the support. And uh, we hope you really did find this um, informative, entertaining. Johnny, I mean, this guy, I've been part of probably like 10, maybe 15 webinars with him about Greek wine. And I learned something new every single time. So, Johnny, thank you so much for all the knowledge you bring. My pleasure. Not to mention that 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 nice, handsome face and the... People say people say we look alike. That's why I'm calling you handsome. We also Except, look alike. Yeah. Like we're definitely long lost cousins. The he, has, he has the better lush lush hair than I do. So, <laughs> but yeah, these were great wines, uh, and um, there's so yeah. much more out there. And if you if you guys follow anything we do uh, and all the past webinars we've done, Foti and I with Johnny, uh, you'll you'll learn about a lot of great stuff that's coming out of Greece. I mean, it, it's, it's just amazing to me because the, these are the wine guys, but uh, you know, I'm part of the group, but I'm not really the wine guy. So I just get to drink and learn about it. And it's fun. It's a lot of fun. And, and Fati, if we wanted more bottles of any one of these yeah. particular wines, you, you how can, do we get them? <laughs> you can visit our platform, which is um, a couple of them. There's what's called, what I'm sure in your packages, we put this uh, nice little addition of a of a of a packing tape that had the keys <laughs> on it, right? Called Greekazon. So Greekazon.com is one of our platforms where we actually have all things Greek uh, that's on it: wines, um, Greek foods from Greece, accessories, anything you can imagine. But it's on Greekazon.com. But then our dedicated platform for Greek wines is called GreekWineClub.co. We couldn't find the .com because it was taken, but .co uh, uh, is there as well. Ari um, you obviously is going to actually list it in the uh, chat box, but we constantly uh, update our platforms with any new products that are coming in. We ship all over the country, um, and we also have options for those of you that might want to send uh, loved ones gifts from our platform. Uh, we're also available for anyone that was uh, visiting, uh, visiting was with us tonight. That we are open to always participating or using our services for other fundraisers, other initiatives, or even private events. Maybe this whole experience, uh, we can bring it to your, you know, your home or for your business or for anything that you want to do. That you know, we're always available. We're always thinking outside the box. We're trying to bring ourselves together through technology. Our culture is so rich and we want to keep it going because we have so much to offer between the food, the wine, and probably our history as, as well. But, you know, please reach out to us with any thoughts, comments, or feedback. You know, we're always uh, willing to listen because you just never know what happens from one event to the other. And then if, you know, again, we're, we're, oh, mics are open. We'd love to, you know, as Greeks, we love to talk. So we obviously want to hear from anyone else that's out there. Uh, that might want to say a few words or anything that they might want to mention. Portsmouth mentioned, uh, thank you for a wonderful evening. Great job. Thank you, Portsmouth, for uh, being part of all this. We appreciate you. We also want to thank the folks that are in Rhode Island and also, also the folks that are in, Conne in Cranston. Cranston. Connecticut as well. We got folks that were in Connecticut. And if I'm not mistaken, we also had folks in New York that also participated with this event. Yeah, the host, wow. Johnny. <laughs> well, outside of Johnny. Oh, okay. <laughs> outside of Johnny. Go ahead, Demetria. Talk. We don't have any questions. Who's um, is somebody talking? Oh, yeah, I have a question. Oh, here we are. Yes. First of all, do you import any wines from Aido Estates in Santorini? 
Ariro Estates, I think, is a different importer um, that is out of New York, but I think we can source it if we make some phone calls. Okay, they had a, they had a, a lot of nice wines from there. So that's, uh, were you ever were you able to visit them when you were in Greece by any chance? Uh, they have a great estate. Looks like you're in California. It looks like you're in wine. Mm. It's beautiful over there. Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, the island is so small, but. Being that it's so small, there's so many amazing uh, places on the island that are producing wine. It's just, I mean, I, I mean, if you if you haven't been there, it's one thing to say, but it's one thing to be there and see it for yourself. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hi, this is Demetria, Annunciation. Uh, we're having a great time here, and I just want to thank you for having the heart. <laughs> thank you. No, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, I had the pleasure of personally driving down to Cranston, Rhode Island. Yes, I'm sorry, and, please, but okay. and, no, I I enjoy, I enjoy the fact that you know, um, growing up in Boston and you know, as a Greek American, being part of different initiatives, Goya, uh, the, 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 the ground, the church was beautiful. Your center was beautiful. Thank you very much. No, no, no. We were looking up GreekWineClub.com. Did I get that right? Well, you know what? It's .co. Ari just .com. I, I got lazy. I didn't want to type that extra M, so we just did it's the .co. .co unfortunately, <laughs> Greek wine is delivered, right? Yeah. Or Greek wines, or actually Greek wines delivered .com. Yes. Yep. Yes. We don't want to confuse you guys. We have like a thousand domain names, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah. it just goes to show us that as, you know, Greeks and Greek Americans across, you know, Ari and I had to have the pleasure of connecting with so many different organizations. And it's amazing to see the support factor that still exists today. Uh, one other quick question for you guys. You yes. A lot of stuff. Do you, do you guys available to bring in Mystica as well? We've been having a hard time getting it over here in Western Mass. So if you if you actually um, yes, we do have actually two different Mysticas on our platform. Um, one is actually produced by a local Greek American who's a friend of ours. She's from Boston. Her brand's called Cleos. Um, amazing product. It's on our platform, and then we have a couple others actually other. Uh, Masticas from Skinos and Roots that are also available. So if you go to Greekazon or GreekWineClub.co, uh, there's a there's three different options for Mastica. All right, great. That's we cool. we used Clio at a um, an event we did uh, a Philoptos event that we did uh, in the last one we did in 2019, and oh, wow. Clio's we, you know it's a sampling. Yes. I think. Many ladies enjoyed her Mastica. It was yes. a big hit. We're very we're, you know, big hit. We're big supporters and advocates. If you enjoy Mastica for its different reasons, uh, this this product is definitely worth it. Uh, yes, absolutely. Any other thoughts or comments? Any other hellos? We have a uh, little go but enjoyed it very much. Thank you to the presenters and to Athena and entire Metropolis Philoptikos. Bravo, Kalinichta. Thank you, George. We also, we also want to thank um, Father Ted. I noticed that Father Ted was uh, joining us this evening as well. He uh, he had to jump on to another call. I asked him but uh, if he wanted to say a few words, but he said it was a great program and congrats. So Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, you know, again, we'd love to at some point sooner than later host another event for you, whether it's here or in person. Um, we also send out a nice monthly newsletter that's called a piece of Greece that has everything that we're tied to, whether it's uh, food, wine, events, philanthropy, um, you know, music, music. Uh, up and coming artists. Uh, we feature everything. And Johnny has a, an article. Uh, Foti has an article, um, and there's a lot of good information in there. If you guys are interested in getting a piece of Greece, just sign up on any of our platforms, and uh, we'll send it out to you. Always good, informative stuff. Excellent. Um, and I think the, uh, the, the fundraising initiatives here were just amazing. We're so 
pleased to see the support and the abilities that we brought together collectively through this platform to make this a success. And you mentioned before, Fati, that uh, you could bring this to people's homes. I'm your partner, so I don't want to like say anything bad, but I don't think anybody really wants you in their homes. So the virtual stuff is good. So yes, we can exactly. just, we'll just stick it, <laughs> stick with that. The delivery. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank All you, right. thank you, thank you to everyone, the people that attended, and to our supporters. And thank you, thank you, Forti, Ari, and Johnny. We love seeing you, and we want to see you again. And hopefully, the next time we'll be in person. So oh, God bless yeah. you, and the Metropolis beloved host thanks you very, very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody yeah. out there. Thank you so much. Thank you, Johnny, again. Thank you, Foti. Thank you, everybody in the Philoptochos. Thanks, everybody who supported, everybody who signed in. And we will say good night. Please finish those wines. We will. <laughs> Don't worry. Bye. All right. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Uh, yeah, happy have a happy Thanksgiving. Happy holidays. And we'll see you guys next time. Great. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Night. Bye. Night. Don't Thank you. you. <laughs>